Welcome back guys. You know what I love doing, and I think what you probably love doing too, is sitting around a fire pit with your family. <coughs> but you know what can really ruin it? Is smoke. And I'm gonna fix that, because I'm gonna show you how to make a smokeless fire pit that actually works. Stick around. The way my fire pit sits right now is probably how tons of other people's are. It's made with basic garden edge pavers stacked up in a circle. They're easy to make and they smoke like crazy. There's lots of videos online of people trying to turn these fire pits into smokeless fire pits. And the way they do that is by removing one of these blocks every so often around the bottom layer. And while that does help, it doesn't solve the entire problem. And it's that second element that I wanna to add to this DIY smokeless fire pit that I think is gonna make the difference. I don't know how to weld, but I do know how to cut. So my first thought was I'll find a stock tank that will fit in the inside diameter of my current fire pit and I'll cut the bottom out of it. Well, much to my delight, come to find out, I could buy this at Tractor Supply. They sell these, basically it's a stock tank ring without the bottom. My first order of business was finding out would this ring fit inside my fire pit? But will the ring leave enough room for air to flow? Ooh, yeah. These pavers, have adjusted over time and settled. So I gotta make sure that they're actually all still level and in good round shape. Unfortunately, everything's just a little too far out of whack and uh, I'm gonna have to totally redo this. So it's just gonna be easier to take all these off and restack them. So this was the first brick that I laid. Last one, next to last one. Let's set the level across there. Bazinga. I've been trying to figure out which bricks to pull out, but I can't pull them out to where I've got the same number between each one. So I've laid out these rocks to try to help me decide. And I just, there's nothing I can do other than to have four bricks, three bricks and four bricks. So I'm gonna pull that one out. Pull that one out and pull that one out. Now you can kind of start to get an idea of where we are going with this, but it's not ready yet because I've got to drill these holes all the way around this ring. This is gonna be fun. If you got a step bit, woo, that's hot. If you got a, yeah, it's warm. If you got a step bit, you may wanna use that instead. But uh, I shall proceed. I forgot to put my safety glasses on, but I've got them on now. Normally I like to live dangerously, but sparks are flying. This is asking a lot of this little 12 volt Milwaukee, but we'll see how far she'll go. It'd be a good idea to go around every one of these with a file or a sander, and I'm gonna go around them with a sander. Now I've got the holes at the bottom of the fire pit surround to let cool air in. I've got a chamber around it to let that air rise, and as that air rises, it will warm. Now I've got the holes drilled in the inner chamber to let that air come in and let that provide oxygen to the fire to combust what will hopefully be the rest of the fuel, i.e. smoke. But to complete that, to just not let the air just go everywhere, I need a cap for this. Now they sell concrete paver caps for these bricks, but they're made to just barely cover them. I need it to span the distance of the inner ring and the outside of the brick. If I had used smaller bricks, I could have used the larger caps that are available, and I probably could span this distance. But because I tried to save money and use my existing bricks, that won't work. What I'm gonna do is make my own custom coping, basically, the cap that will go on top of here. And you can do that too, and I'll show you. It's very simple to do. I think I have some blue foam in here. And I do, it's back there behind all of this. All right, so that's the next thing I gotta get out, that blue foam. There's one, two,
I know that the outside diameter for my cap is 56 inches and the inside I want to be 34 inches. So what I'm going to do is just take a piece of this drop. This is just some that I trimmed off of a two by four whenever I was making the walls for the camper. And I'm just going to cut this extra long. I'll mark this, what will be the center of my compass right there. Now I know what you're wondering, am I going to get my radius and my diameter confused like I did in the lawnmower video? No, no I'm not. I'm going to measure out. My 34 inch diameter becomes a 17 inch radius. My 56 inch diameter becomes a 28 inch radius. Now to make the best use out of my foam, I know that my longest radius is 28 inches. So I'm going to come over 28 and let's say 28 and a half inches. I'm going to draw that out so that I have the straight lines there. I'll get this screw started and I can put my Sharpie and there's my inside radius. And there's my outside radius. All I have to do is cut this one piece out and then I'll trace it three more times and then I'll have the base for the mold for each one of the caps. There it is, the first base. I want these pavers to be two inches thick. Well, the styrofoam itself is five eighths thick, so I'm gonna rip pieces for the sides at two and five eighths wide. That will account for the base of the form being five eighths thick. I'm going to flip all of these base pieces over to where what I want the concrete against is going to be facing down and I'm going to start applying adhesive to it. Now you can just go to a local hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, and you can pick up some contact cement and you can put it on with a brush and that'll probably actually work easier and less messy than what I'm going to do. What I'm going to use though is this um, tank of contact cement that's in a spray form with a spray gun, because that's what I have. So that's what I'm gonna use. Now that both sides of the contact cement are dry, I'm gonna start applying this. And I'm just gonna line that end up and make sure everything is pushed down as I push it against it. That'll help hold that side together. Good old duct tape. I'm going to take some silicone and run around in the corner of the mold just so that I can kind of round that edge a little bit and the silicone will help hold the form together. I'm gonna get the other three done and I'm gonna let them set overnight to let the silicone dry and then tomorrow we'll pour. 24 hours later. Now that the molds have set overnight and the silicone is dried, it's time to apply a highly specialized concrete release agent. Yep, that's right, Pam. I've arranged these on my table in a manner that I hope will prevent any Taco Bell scale blowouts. <clears throat> because if there is a blowout, it's gonna be at the back, probably not on the inside radius, so. Let's apply the Pam. Let's 
gonna make sure I've got it kind of over everything using a paper towel. The concrete pavers making up the surround of the fire pit have a really rough finish. And I wanna kind of tie in with that, but I don't want it super rough. The way I'm gonna achieve that aged finish is with baking soda. Just put the baking soda in a bowl then take some water and mix it up. You want it to be really clumpy. That's what you're looking for, that type of consistency. Now you just want to bring out your inner chimpanzee and start flinging. Be sure to throw some on the sides also. You may have to make your mix a little bit wetter to make it stick on the sides. And if you get too much, just pull it off. If you don't have any collateral damage in your shop, you're probably not putting enough effort into it. You can mix the concrete up in a wheelbarrow. That's the easiest thing, but I happen to have this Harbor Freight concrete mixer that I've had for years and it still works. So that's what I'm going with. All right, I'll call that good. I don't have a concrete scoop, but I do have a dog food scoop, so that's what I'm using. Be careful whenever you're ladling it in here, gently, especially the first layer, that you don't disturb the uh, baking soda because you'll just make a mess of it and all that effort will have been for nothing. I've got this first one filled up about halfway. I'm just gonna kind of pat it down. I went to the store and bought this fiberglass uh, mesh mat, and I'm just gonna kind of tear it up and throw it in here. You could put rebar in here, but I couldn't really find any thin rebar near me. Now, fiberglass is something commonly used in concrete work, so this is not unusual, but this will just give it some extra strength. I don't wanna go through all this effort of making these molds and then my paver break because that would suck. So I'm gonna do this three more times and then I'll let these set overnight. The next day. It's 20 degrees cooler today than it was yesterday. So the rules say, especially for gray concrete, that it's gonna take even longer to set up. So really I should let these set for at least another day or two, but uh, I don't like following the rules. So I'm going to try to take these out and we'll see what happens. My original intent was to just tear these molds off, but since I'm kind of risking breaking this, I'm gonna see if I can get lucky and just pull it off. You never know. You never know. Oh, oh, oh snap. Please be nice, please be nice, please be nice. Yeah, boy. I will take that. That looks fantastic. I love it. Oh, oh, it's what's okay. Okay, we'll fix you. We'll fix you. Just stay good. Don't you break on me. All right then, let's see how they look. Oh, I'm liking it very much. If I wanna put down, it looks better. Hey, little friend. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. I think it looks, Amazing. 
exactly what I wanted. Later, I'll probably add some concrete adhesive to this just to make sure it doesn't shift and add a little bit of cushion, but I'm not worried about that right now. I love the way it looks, but none of that means anything if it's not smokeless. So let's start the Holy crap. I didn't even expect it to work that well. This is amazing. Plus it looks super sweet. Do you think this fire puts off just as much smoke as the original fire pit did? I think not. I am thrilled without the dog food scoop. The dog food scoop? Yeah. No, I haven't seen it. 